to the topic of the hour. How many of you use Teams? All of you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am here with the dude of the hour, Bill Bliss, Bill Bliss, the architect of the Teams team, right now. Oh, he's right here. Hi, Bill. How are hey, you? Hey, hi, Donna. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. So you and your team are the heroes of, you know, 75 million people. Ish. I know yeah. it's uh, mm -hmm. hard to believe. I've been watching. I watched the uh, the intro from Rajesh and yeah. uh, one of my compatriots on Teams, and the the excitement mm -hmm. and the momentum around Teams is just amazing. It's really hard to believe that it didn't exist, you know, uh, just a few short years ago. That's right. Um, so tell us a little bit about first of all, you. Tell us about how long have you been with Microsoft? How long have you been with the Teams team? Well, I've been with Microsoft. Um, I guess. Gosh, um, close to 20, I guess close to just under 23 years, but that's across two tours. Oh. So I was here for six and a half years the first time, and then I came back to work for Brian McDonald, who founded cool. Teams in 2013. And that was just before Satya came on board, which was uh, awesome timing, and uh, I was very fortunate. But then I was actually with the Teams effort from the very beginning. Brian handpicked about oh, maybe a dozen people from what he was running at the time on MSN. And I had worked for Brian on Outlook. So um, when he asked me to work on another startup product, I'm like, uh, wow. I mean, yeah. most people don't have a chance to do that once. <laughs> I get to maybe have a chance to do it twice. Still, this has exceeded all my expectations. That is so cool. That is amazing. So you've been on Teams since day one. That means you know everything about it. So I know where all the skeletons are buried. Uh huh. He knows where all the skeletons <laughs> are buried. So tell us a little bit about how what it's been like to work on Teams lately, because suddenly the demand is everything, right? We people run entire businesses on Teams. So yes, tell it's us been about it. it's been insane, especially with the with the COVID pandemic. Yeah. I mean, we've had to, and it's re really um, I have had personally have had relatively little to do with it, but the team, both the team's team proper, but also our infrastructure team, uh, our what's called the uh, Intelligent Communications Cloud, IC3, and also our, you know, our, uh, our fellow engineers on Azure have just gone nuts trying to deploy new capacity, build out new stuff. I mean, you may have remembered that um, how Netflix had to tone down or had to stop yes. using high definition bandwidth in Europe. Mm -hmm. Well, we had we had some of the same issues. We were literally running out of bandwidth in some of our European data centers, mm -hmm. and so we actually had uh, to turn off. So, for example, um, you know when you when a bot is typing to you, a developer can actually send a little typing message. You know, not that a bot types, but it makes mm -hmm. it look like they are. Yes. Well, we yeah. had to turn that off because it was starting to time out, and it was because of the same network bandwidth issue that was causing, you know, Netflix to tone down uh, the bandwidth usage. Like we were literally running out of bandwidth in Europe. That's incredible because these aren't yes. things that we think about until there's a yeah. global pandemic. Yeah. Well, we never thought about it either. No. We're like. What's going on? We got these weird alerts, like and and some some of our developers told us, and it showed up in our our telemetry, and and so we made some quick changes, and we've had to do a number of other number of other things too. But at the same time, we were rolling out features, like we went from uh, two by two to three by three grid right. um, meetings, and that I mean that was huge. Um, uh, but like the same time, you know, the United United Arab Emirates, the UAE, mm -hmm. basically went. You know, their entire school system went um, on Teams, um, like over a weekend. So it's just been insane. There's been nothing else like it, and hopefully never will be again. But I mean, it's been great for us, and it's yeah. been hopefully great for our customers. Yeah, I so far I've been hearing so many good experiences. I actually have a funny story for you. One of my um, friends who works at Microsoft, he went home, and he this is after the pandemic started, and he saw that his kid, a seven-year-old, is using Teams. He said, oh, you're using Teams. And the seven-year-old says, yeah, it's how we do school. The next day, a seven-year-old goes over to him and says, why are you using Teams? This is for kids. Like, <laughs> when did you get it? And so he was getting schooled by his seven-year-old on how to use Teams. So I thought that was Yeah, hilarious. it reminds me of the old uh, Tricks commercial. So, so silly rabbit, tricks yeah. are for kids. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is true. So we're at Build. You know, this is the biggest Build we've ever had. We're at like 400,000 viewers right now on Twitter. It's crazy. It's actually insane. So what have you got for devs? Because we know Teams Dev is a huge, huge business. Um, what, would you like, what would you like devs to think about, focus on, do, et cetera, et cetera? Well, so thanks, thanks for asking. So... Mm -hmm. 
One of the things that we, what we usually do at Build and what we're also doing this year still is introducing new features and new yeah. capabilities for developers and so forth. But we've also spent a couple sessions talking about what we call the Microsoft Teams app templates. Mm. And these are pretty interesting. We started out with just a few, but now they're close to 20. And what they are, are they're a real world, industrial strength, ready to deploy on app, ready to deploy to Azure apps for Microsoft Teams and that's what, again, that's what we call the Microsoft Teams app templates. So that's cool. So, okay. Go, yeah. Go ahead. Oops. I think we've got weird stuttering. But um, these app templates are really, really wonderful for devs who are like, I want to build an app. I'm not good at actually designing an app, and I would love a place to start. I think that right. is super powerful. Really, really important. Yeah. And what's kind of cool is that. What we looked at is we actually talked to a lot of our customers mm -hmm. and a lot of them said, hey, we want to use Teams. Mm -hmm. And in particular, we want to use Teams where we use email today or where we use homegrown web apps or, right. or what have you. And, but we also said, we also noticed a lot of patterns start to emerge where they said, you know, across industries, across different types of organizations. So remember, you know, Teams, as we talked about earlier, Teams is used in schools and the educational right. version of Teams, but also across, you know, nonprofits and medical and, um, you know, knowledge workers, um, traditional knowledge workers like mm -hmm. us, developers and so forth. So it's used across a broad spectrum of industries, but there's a couple of scenarios that are actually universal across all of those organizations. And so when we when we looked at what we could do to not only help people, you know, deploy Teams apps without actually necessarily writing a lot of code, we said, well, what are some things that are actually can solve real world problems inside on inside uh, organizations. And so that actually inspired us to build a lot of these where, you know, people said, "Oh, we want to do a way to do this or we want a way to do that." I love that. I think that's super powerful. Um, we've got, we recently onto the cloud advocates team where Seth and I both work, we've hired teams advocates because it's the mm. first time before it was Azure advocates. Then it was me, the power platform oh, cool. advocate. Now we've hired teams advocates to do exactly this kind of work to go out there and talk to companies and businesses and ISVs about how they can solve their problems using apps built within Teams. And so many people say, oh, it's so hard to start. We're not really devs or we don't quite know what to build or how right. to build it. So these applet templates will really help a ton. Yeah, well, yeah, we hope so. Yeah. And they're actually being used now. Um, as I mentioned, oh, cool. some of them Good. have been around for you know several months yeah. um, and they've been deployed um, on customer sites. Mm -hmm. And what's also interesting about them is that not only are they industrial strength with things like you know telemetry right. and you can even localize them. All the strings are in a ResX file, so you can you know localize them into other languages. So not only are they industrial strength in that regard, they use across, especially across all of them, they use all the capabilities of the Microsoft platform, you know, Power Apps and yeah. Power Automate, formerly Flow, yeah. <laughs> Logic yeah. Apps, you know, mm -hmm. all the connectors. Um, for both for the power platform, mm -hmm. it uses um, SharePoint, SharePoint right. lists for storage. It uses Azure storage, Azure search, um, the Q&A maker platform. Um, and what's kind of cool is that we've stitched all those together and used what we think are the best of breed, you know, subsystems for wiring those things up. So the actual amount of code that you actually is writing, running in Teams is actually fairly small. Right. But one of the things we found with Teams apps is that it's not always obvious what a Teams app is. Right. And one of the things I, because I talked about this in my skilling session, the uh, SK100 yeah. uh, session. And one of the things I point out is that architecturally, Teams apps are a lot like web apps, yeah. right? Um, you know, with a bot or rather with a web app, you have a web app or a server that spits back HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And with a bot, it's similar, except that you're spitting back JSON, yeah. and that gets read by the Teams UI. But functionally, it's a lot like a web app, which is pretty interesting and not necessarily obvious. I think that is fabulous, where it's it's a similar concept, right? People say, I know what a web app is. What is the Teams app? You're like, it's kind of like that. Right. It's not a whole different paradigm that you need to learn. For the audience, Bill brought up Power Apps and Power Automate on his own. I did not bribe him or lead him in any way, shape, or form. So the crew over here has a whole bet going on on how many times I'm going to say the words power platform before everyone falls down. Yeah. So we're, we're at maybe like 250 so far. <laughs> 
Um, so speaking of, we did this interesting Power Virtual Automate integration into Teams. And oh. I thought that was kind of cool. It happened in a hackathon. Um, we did this hack for good as part of the big power platform community. There's 359 attendees all over the world. And one of the things was, how do you make meetings not boring? And so one of the teams in the UK made this thing called a CRISPOT, where they made a power virtual agent and then integrated it into teams to just work there within a proper business meeting. And I thought that was fun and cool. And what did they do? And so it just entertains you. It'll say, this meeting is boring. <laughs> and it'll chime in. Oh, yeah. yeah, it'll monitor sentiment and then, you know, like interrupt you with a joke or you can play games together and all of that. I'll send you a demo. It's cool. It's 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 a really, really funny. fun thing. Yeah, That's, that is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the things that actually, you know, is has always been a focus for us. And one of the apps, you know, coincidentally is like that. Um, it, personal expression is a big part of Teams. That's yeah. why we had... Giphy and stickers and memes and so forth. Yeah. And so one of the things that we that is 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 one of the things you can do in Teams is you can actually create your own stickers and and oh, and things yeah. like. That. Mm -hmm. But as a as a company or as a team, you can't. Rather, there's no central place to store them. So one of these one of the power or rather one of the app templates, as I mentioned, is a team. Um, for, well, I think they call it a. Uh, personal expression, but it's a way for basically having teams up or or the entire company, if they want, curate sets of of content like that because it allows people, you know, because we use gifts a ton, yeah, and you know, we you know are really uh, you know there's always interesting ways for people to come up with um, you know ways to do that, and that way you can be captured in a central repository and again all stored in Azure. That. Is that makes perfect sense. So store in Azure, get like blob storage or something or another, so attach them in there and refer to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like that. That is a cool idea. So I'll tell you, we are working on a secret killer app. It's not a secret now that we're telling 400,000 people. Um, and maybe you can help us out to brainstorm it a little, maybe not now, but in general, which is we have Microsoft Learn and we have Teams. And many times people like to learn with their team. Right, so we're thinking about a way to host Microsoft Learn within Teams in some sort of appification where people can go through the modules and choose and maybe say, here's the group focused on Power Platform, here's the group focused on IoT, et cetera, then assign out specific modules to specific channels within a team. What do you think of that? Well, the, first of all, I think it's a really interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. And what, one of the main themes behind the Teams platform is that it allows you to bring the capabilities of the apps you use regularly yeah. to you, so rather than you switch context and go to a browser tab and right. so forth. But the example you mentioned mm -hmm. is perfectly tailor-made for the Teams Tabs platform. Ah, Teams so, Tabs. Okay. Yeah. Teams Tabs, mm -hmm. which again, a Teams app is composed of one or more cap what we call a capability. So yeah. a bot is a capability, yes. uh, a, uh, a tab is a capability, yeah. message extension, and so forth. But at any rate, one of them is a tab. And a tab is just a way to package a, a web app so that it can run inside of Teams. So if you have a channel tab, you have one UI for uh, where you where you pick the tab, where you maybe left a log yeah. in and you pick what you want to show and so forth. All that is under the covers is just a fancy way of building a URL. Ah, That's all it is. Yeah. And then when the tab is running, it's just an iframed, uh, it's just an iframed URL. It's just a, a website under the covers. But there's a few different things, like there's a way of getting the name of the login user and the team so you can get the context in which you're running. And there's a way to... Uh, well, there's some security things, of course, you have to worry yeah. about, you know, logging in and so forth. But most interestingly is that, uh, or from a, from, from a developer standpoint, most apps are designed not to be iframed yeah. because it's a security thing. Um, uh, um, click jacking, the click jacking attack. Well, and so there's a way of packaging it up. So you say, oh, am I running inside of Teams? And then you can allow yourself to be running inside of Teams and be iframed by Teams. So ah, that makes perfect that's sense. What is. I love that. Look at all this free consulting. I have learned so much from this conversation, Bill. Thank you so much. I'm going to look so smart to my boss. You're welcome, Jeff. And yes, Patrick. you will. Yeah. And by the way, now one mm -hmm. of the features we're announcing at Build is single sign-on for tabs. Oh, really? Yeah. Single sign-on for tabs. Um, okay. Yeah, because people don't ever think about this, mm -hmm. but 
Um, there's no standardized way to get an authenticated context when you're running inside of someone because the container can lie about who it is. So there's no way we can just pass a token over the iframe boundary. So we had to actually work with the Azure AD team and our security consultants and so forth. And we came up with a way of having a secure handshake back and forth. And so you running inside of Teams yeah. where you've got a secure context yeah. can actually just, you know, it's, so it's great. It's like sandbox in a sandbox. I love that. Exactly That right. is so cool. Awesome. Thank you, Bill Bliss, for being here with us. You can find him on Twitter and ask him all the questions about Teams because he knows all the things. Awesome.